So today I am gonna talk about Alpha Investments video, millions of dollars of magic gathering losses. Now I'm gonna make another video about this other topic and I think um, there was another video he made, Magic 30th uh, continues causing damage like damage the market, continues to damage the market. And that was another Alpha Investment video and I'm gonna talk about why this is the case. So Magic the Gathering, they reprinted an entire set and this set had reserve list cards. The Magic the Gathering 30th anniversary, I, for all intents and purposes, yes, it's a proxy. Yes, the backs are different. I got it, I got it, got it. We can go on and on and on and argue about this, but for all intents and purposes, they did reprint Alpha set. Now, I guess you could say that they reprinted beta set because alpha edges are different. So, okay, let's say they reprinted beta set. Well, beta set has reserve list. It has um, power nine, right? It has cards that are not supposed to be reprinted in this way. And if you have any issue with that, look at Mero's original tweets about on the issue. He, uh, he was asked directly, would you ever reprint a Black Lotus with a different back? And at the time he said no. So what would prevent them from reprinting that set with the correct back? Nothing, nothing. They just have to change the back out. Then what would stop them from reprinting Arabian Nights booster boxes? If they're willing to, so if you're saying, hey, they can't print Arabian Nights booster boxes because they have reserve list cards in them. You're wrong because they reprinted beta or alpha, whatever you think that set is. Let's just call it alpha beta. I'll just call it AB, right? If they were gonna reprint alpha beta, you don't think they can reprint unlimited in a booster box? So the way, not only the way they reprinted, so if they reprinted it like kind of like Yu-Gi-Oh does sometimes with like, you know, um, a just one card. Oh, this is Blue Eyes White Dragon, guys. This is amazing, you know, our new artwork and so on. Uh, that would be very different because you would be buying a package and it wouldn't be a, a booster pack. It wouldn't have that random gambling feeling, right? That people like. Uh, that box breakers and whatnot, they're all feeding from this, oh, hey, we can hit a double retro Black Lotus. I mean, only if you're an Wizard of the Coast employee, right? <laughs> can you hit the retro Black Lotus? The only known retro Black Lotus to my, and I'm pretty sure, somebody correct me, I'm wrong, was hit by a Wizard of the Coast employee who then posted it online. Uh, you can't make this stuff up, right? And I bet you that dude's got like 500 of them just in, just in his back pocket. He wanted to post one to see the reaction. I think he also hit like a Mox Ruby too. And so out four packs, the guy hit two. I mean, that's sick, right? Sick, 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 right? And on his salary, how is he able to afford this, honestly? Wizard of the Coast doesn't pay them no nothing. They, pay, they underpay the developers by like 40% of market price. So this dude's getting paid like pennies a dollar, pennies... You know, there is some idea that like, you know, in Pokemon, we see that with Fusion Strike, that if you are a minimal wage employee or being paid $15, $20, like Amazon rates, and you're just at the warehouse and you're seeing all these, you know, very bad hundreds of thousands of dollars being cut in front of your eyes, why don't you just kind of take a pot and no, good to go, <laughs> right? I mean, why, why is there not a temptation to do that? Like these people are being paid very little money and they're seeing hundred mil, hundreds of millions of dollars printed every day in their facility. Why wouldn't they just take these cards, press the button again, or you know, let's say after work is done, you sneak into the building, you already have all the skills, you know what buttons to press, right? Because they train you and just run the factory for like one hour. I mean, you don't even want to run for an hour. You can run for a minute and you would still get like, again, you could just print retro Black Lotus for a minute. Like you can print like a thousand of them, you're good to go. And then you slowly sell them online. Why not? So the um, the millions of dollars of you know losses, the alpha investment saying, I think we all feel this as a store. And you know, I don't want to pick on just magic. Obviously, we have that Pokemon debacle, which indicates that it could also happen to magic, especially serial numbered cards. Wink wink, Star City Games. Um but, you know, I mean I I a lot of people won't tell you the truth because I too have dead bags. I made a video saying, I'm not against Rudy Chan pumping magic. I have the same mother effing sets he does. Like, do you understand? 
that if Rudy Chan can pump magic, I benefit from it directly. Not indirectly, not secondary, not torture. No, I benefit directly. Because the heavy bags and the millions of dollars of losses he has, I have those same losses to a lesser extent. No, I, I see the market for the same thing that he's, I mean, a lot of people don't talk about it because they're trying to move their heavy bags. Like if the last thing you would want to do is talk about why these sets suck, if you're trying to sell the blood money blinding set. Um, a lot of it does have to do with the, the fret of reprint. So why buy, you know, let me let's just use an analogy. Why buy a Khaled S booster box for 400, whatever it's going for right now, 200, something like that, 300, who knows? Well, why buy a War, I, I know War Spark. Why buy a War Spark booster box for 150 if they can just literally reprint it, throw it on Amazon for 50 bucks? You do realize from Neon Dynasty to Baldur's Gate, Commander Legends to um the other the other forgotten realms and the double uh dungeon and dragons that was kind of weird they did commander legends and stuff um and new compena i can name dominaria united da, da, da. i can name all the sets all the way up to the most recent set march of the machines you do know that amazon will throw them at 72 dollars at any given time just randomly sometimes a box so if you made an investment from your local game store at 100 or from Rudy Chan. Rudy Chan's not charging you 72. 72 is beyond asinine to charge because that is so low free shipping. You ain't make, so people talk, oh, well, the word, blah, 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 blah. No, 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 That Those boxes, they have lost a lot of money, but they're nothing compared to the position you would be in if you invested in new Compena. They're nothing compared to the position you would be in if you invested in Midnight Hunt or Crimson Vow. Crimson Vow, I saw for $50, $52. No, Midnight Hunt, I said, I saw for $52. I mean, there are dead, there are Fire Emblem Cypher for 16 packs is $60. There are booster boxes at any given time of Magic the Gathering cards that are less, that are less money and have doubled the packs, roughly, actually more than double the packs than a dead card game from Japan. No, I make fun of Meta Zoo and stuff, but we, we can look at, we can, you know, for like $1 packs, 50 cents packs, but we can look at Magic. How much is Midnight Hunt a pack for a, a draft or a set? Less, probably less than a dollar, right? Uh, hold on, no, not less than, less than $2. How much is New Compena? $2 on sale for $72. I mean, you have to really think about this for a moment in time. The most recent boxes, starting from, I don't know when, but I'll take Crimson Vow as a start, Midnight Hunt as a start. How can you invest in something when Amazon is ready to slash and have a sale at any time with no limit? Why would anyone buy, or why would anyone, first of all, why would anyone want a Midnight Hunt box? Secondly, why would they buy from you when it's half off on Amazon all the time? The answer is not, it's therefore it's not investable. So millions of dollars of uh, magic gathering losses. Uh, yeah, if you bought any of the new sets, I mean, I'll just name it for you. Forgotten Realms kind of sucked. Um, if you bought Collector's Edition, a Throne of the Eldrin and Pharaohs, and they're all under MSRP. And what's the other one? Zendikar and, and the blah, I mean, I think Zendikar does okay, right? Because of Godzilla and Throne of the Eldrin, they have like one card in it, but got reprinted. It's like the giant, the great Hedgemon or something. I think I got reprinted in March on the Machines. This is like a random March. Why would this green card that is all about like, or I mean, it's so weird, right? Why did I get reprinted? Uh, the, the bonus sheet, oh God, the bonus sheets. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh man. Okay, so basically what I'm here to tell you is singles that, I mean, I, I, obviously I'm not talking about reserve list. Reserve list is a different game, but is it a different game? We'll talk about that later for Magic 3rd and another Rudy Chan video. Like why, okay, so Rudy Chan supposedly has a lot of Arabian Nights. Why shouldn't Wizard of Coast for a celebration make a Arabian Nights set, a booster box? 
What is preventing them from reprinting Arabian Nights? I, I ask you that, really, honestly. Oh, reserve, no, 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 they printed uh, Alpha Beta. So if they're reprinting Alpha Beta, if they can reprint Power Nine, Dual Lands, why do you think, and again, we can argue until we're blue in the face whether or not, it is a reprint, okay, it is a reprint. It's just a weird reprint, but it is a reprint. No, like no one would say the um, the Challenger decks are, well not Challenger decks, that's Pokemon, the, uh, no, Challenger decks, magic. The, um, the Champion decks, the World Champion decks, no one would say that's not a reprint. People play in EDAs all the time. They sleeve those up. If, if you have any doubt about them, you know, look at the price of a, a world champion force of will. It's slightly less than a real one. Uh, look at a world champion uh, survival of the fittest and recurring nightmare. All these cards, they're worth a lot of money. These de decks cost $10 if you get the right deck. I think there's one with like a bunch of gayers cradles, right? Those cradles are worth more than the, I mean, the deck is $10 and the cradle is worth like 200, 300. Near me, which, which should be near me because it's a sealed deck, right? And you get four of them, I guess. I know you get four Force of Wills in that one deck and that one deck is worth so much money. So, and, and, and people still use them into play and then people, they still have value. So I, I, we can argue if it's, it's a reprint or not, but I fully think it's a reprint. So they're willing to reprint Magic 30. Uh, Magic 30 if it was a reprint of Alpha Beta. Well, you know, hey, what else is having a 30th anniversary soon? Oh, Arabian Nights, right? Because we're cycling. Would it shock me if every single year from now, oh, the 30th anniversary for Arabian Nights. Oh, the 30th anniversary for Legends. Oh, they, they, remember they did that. Le There's many ways to do it. They could also just find a pallet of lost cards. Wow, so convenient. So convenient. I mean, you realize, right, that, you know, like, it's kind of hard to lose something for that long. I think it was 25 years they lost Legends. Like, how would you not know? And why, and would you even use the same warehouse? Like, how would you not know that there's, like, a pallet of just random stuff? A pallet is not, like, you know, or a few pallets, whatever the amount was, just enough to sell our Dominary United before we uh, did New Phyrexia. <laughs> And as soon as New Phyrexia, no one talked about that palette anymore. <laughs> anyway, bye guys.